And that's what you get when you repress children. They rebel and go overboard. Lesson to parents win. We not only see him enjoying the candy, but we see him trying to learn more, experiment, and try and figure out how to make it taste better. We see the beginnings of Wonka. For you see, Mr. Wonka, I myself am in the nut business. <laughs> Wonka gives no fucks. The Nut Room. Burton was so dead set on not using CGI, he had his guys train rescue squirrels to handle the nuts. They even gave them names like Slowpoke. Yeah, many of these squirrels are real. The real ones are here, 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 and here. It's amazing how they got the squirrels to do all that. Opening the nuts, climbing on the stunt girl in the mask, and even pushing Mr. Salt in. Animal training win! Daddy, I want a squirrel. Get me one of those squirrels. I want one. It's almost robotic how she asks for something. I don't mean that as a knock, it feels deliberate. Like, I see thing, I want thing, beep boop. That's what you turn your kids into, people. Daddy. I'm sorry, darling. Mr. Wonka's being unreasonable. Patronizing the spoiled child win and ventriloquism win. Don't touch that squirrel's nuts. You did that on purpose. Oh man, the squirrel attack is so terrifying and I love it. I remember thinking as a kid, OMG, are they eating her? Awesome! Oh my goodness, she is bad nut after all. What would they have done if she was a good nut? Cracked her open? Also, earlier in the movie, Veruca forces workers who open nuts to get the thing she wants. She tries to do the same thing again, and it backfires. Ironic punishment win. But don't worry, we only light it on Tuesdays. Today is Tuesday. Dang it, Mike, you have a big mouth. He did all of this on purpose. And we go from terrifying child murder to an upbeat hippie beach song. I love this movie. I've just been informed that the incinerator's broken. Whoo! Dodged a major lawsuit there. Probably. I don't know why I didn't think of this earlier. The elevator's by far the most efficient way to get around the factory. Maybe because everyone wouldn't fit and you plan for that and you're still trying to keep everyone guessing with this I'm a moron act? And the great glass elevator. It looks like a glass elevator, not just an elevator with glass, which is half of them. And a giant refrigerated chocolate mountain. Is this what Switzerland is like? Chocolate! Still, that was in the book. Glad they were able to lift that. Though I still think they could have at least attempted to do square candies that look round. Read the book, it's a great joke. Oh! I'd rather not talk about this one. Haha, <laughs> Wonka's probably doing something illegal. Hello, Doris. And that's why they made all the Oompa Loompas Deep Roy. Worth it. And you can see Doris's reflection in the elevator. Nice touch. So this is either Oompa Loompa Recreation or how they make Pop Rocks. Either way, sign me up. Candy is a waste of time. Triggered. And now we know why he was left to die last. The candy capitals of the world. Why does he say that like a supervillain? Well, his dad is Christopher Lee. It fits. Aw, Christopher Lee didn't want to see his kid go. Sorry, son. We're closing for the night. <laughs> what a swerve. Also, showing us the beginnings of Wonka's twisted mind. Did those guards just let him hang out in the flag room all day? Well, as long as they kept an eye on him, watchful guards doing their duty. Oh, that'll violate the warranty, but it went for actually following through on that hollow threat. Though, this is Wonka we're talking about. Maybe his crazy mind has colored his past a bit. I want a bigger room. Go ahead. Wonka knows exactly what he's doing. He planned all of this. Also, that's what you get for belittling someone's life's work in front of them and triggering a traumatic flashback. Jerk. And right there appears that Wonka designed houses for the Oompa Loompas similar to the ones they had in Loompa Land, bringing the comforts of home win. And now the television room. Ever notice that these rooms seem to get less and less colorful as we progress further into the factory? I'll let you draw your own conclusions from that, but I like to see it as Wonka's past gets more hopeless and drab, so does the factory. Oprah is always a win. You don't understand anything about science. 
First off, there's a difference between waves and particles. Oy, this kid is like every over-opinionated internet dweller who reads no science but spouts off everything he's read in a passing internet article as the results of modern investigation, like he's the smartest kid in the world. All he needs is a trailby and he'd be perfect. Also, <laughs> someone's never heard of wavicle theory, poser. Also, Sprague Zarathustra is always, always a win. And it fits, as a funny parody of 2001 happens immediately after. And it raises a lot of funny questions if the monolith was a Wonka bar the whole time. Thanks for that, Tim. Oi, we all feel that boy's energy. Even there, Charlie's still not out of the habit of savoring each bite as if it were precious. Try one for yourself. And you simply reach out and take it. Free samples from the comfort of your chair? Well, I'm sold. Creative marketing with smoke and mirrors win. Do you have any idea what breakfast cereal's made of? It's those little curly wooden shavings you find in pencil sharpeners. Won't deny, I thought that at one point in my childhood. How does this movie see inside my childhood brain? Don't you realize what you've invented? It's a teleporter. Also anti-gravity, and finally, an explanation for why Wonka Vision is so great. In the original, they talked it up and said it could change the world, but they only seem to care about the TV part of it. And this kid's in line for a Darwin Award. Also, this music is much different. Instead of celebrating television chocolate like a grand technological marvel, the tones are now shrill and oscillating, like this is a strange, weird, and possibly dangerous technology. We would all do that. Don't lie. Relatability win. Well, I sometimes only half the little pieces find their way through. If you had to choose only one half of your son, which one would it be? Just in case you need a reminder that Wonka's empathy is... stunted. Also, I'd pick the top half. Yeah, Doll's weird moralizing creating a bit of dissonance due to the current medium through which we are viewing the story aside. This is the best song! It's trippy as heck, all the references, the references aged well, the almost DJ level of style changes, and all the costumes Deep Roy got to have fun in? It's an absolute feast for the eyes and ears. Oh, thank heavens, he's completely unharmed. Unharmed? What are you talking about? Hey, he could be missing a half. Technically, he is still uninjured and alive. Just now the only thing big about him is his ego. I want you to take Mr. TV and his... little boy. You did that on purpose. But luckily for us, we have the great glass elevator to speed things along. <laughs> that would totally happen if you had a glass elevator. Realism... win? Always recycle your 3D glasses. And notice he only had enough glasses for the TVs and the buckets. He planned this. But it's made of glass. It'll smash into a million pieces. <laughs> that is 10 pounds of regret in a one pound bag. And we actually see what happens to the kids in the end. Dodging major child endangerment lawsuit win. Seriously, Wilder, I like you, but how are you gonna explain all that if they died? Augustus, please don't eat your fingers, but I taste so good. It's a big meal. Savor it. Look, Mother, I'm much more flexible now. Optimism. Yes, but you're blue. Yeah, you just want everything, don't you, lady? She's bound to place first at every gymnastics event now. Don't knock it till you try it. Blue and gold work great together. Daddy, I want a flying glass elevator. Look, the only thing you'll get in today is a bath, and that's fine. Someone learned their lesson. Yeah, after the literal rubbish day I've had, I'd be done with her shenanigans too. Maybe this will encourage Mike to eat chocolate. He'll fill out fast. But I like how the parents are shown the results of their parenting. Some are embarrassed like Mrs. Beauregard and Mr. TV. Mrs. Gloop is horrified. And the only one who's clearly done with his daughter's shenanigans is Mr. Salt. Learning lessons win. There's someone at the door. That woman is so precious. We could do a wind segment on her alone. This is Willy Wonka. He gave us a ride home. You see that? Voice of reason, still getting those zingers. In that one silver hair, I saw reflected my life's work. My factory, my beloved Oompa Loompas. Who would watch over them after I was gone? And that answers the question as to why he chose this particular time to open the factory. And here we come to the biggest deviation from all adaptations. Wonka denying Charlie's family. 
I mean, given what we've learned from his past, all that misanthropy building up from an early age, it certainly makes sense that his character would do this. He left his father and became a giant success, and every adult who's worked with him has disappointed him. Of course he wouldn't see this as wrong. It's a sad change, but it's a realistic way to go, and it was given the stamp of approval from Felicity Doll, so... yeah. Then I'm not going. I like how Charlie was able to give Wonka the benefit of the doubt with every other bizarre, kinda sketchy thing he did all day, but denying him his family was crossing the line. Really shows that he holds his loved ones in the highest regard. Pure family man win. Not for all the chocolate in the world. There's other candy too besides chocolate. Charlie's face, like, bitch, really? Well, that's just... Unexpected. The audience's exact reaction to this deviation, I guarantee. Also, it's interesting to see Wonka's entire worldview just shatter. He lets misanthropy that started with his father consume him for all these years. On one hand, he understood the darkness in people's hearts, and he was able to manipulate the world and especially the kids due to it. But on the other hand, it's also corrupted his view of people. When each kid fell, he was either sadistically pleased, annoyed, or sometimes both. Heck, even during Violet's scene, he was more embarrassed and concerned about his own safety than hers. Others don't really matter to him. And remember what he said earlier? I invited five children to the factory, and the one who was the least rotten would be the winner. Not most good. Least rotten. This Wonka considers people other than himself to be bad people, and himself the best kind of person, almost like a moral solipsist. That happy, bouncy song at the beginning even exacerbates this. He's never counted on selflessness or familial love. In fact, he's resented that last one for most of his life, and that's why he's coming out of this whole situation empty-handed. Character study win. Sure you won't change your mind? Notice he paused there. Yes, Charlie loved the factory and wants to get out of this impoverished lifestyle. He knows what he's giving up and he doesn't want to give it up, but he loves his family so much and he knows what's the right thing to do, so he's putting his foot down. Charlie's father got a better job at the toothpaste factory, repairing the machine that had replaced him. Interesting commentary on automation here. Yes, some jobs will disappear due to progress, but others can and will appear in their place. I've always made whatever candy I felt like, and I... That's just it, isn't it? I make the candy I feel like, but now I feel terrible, so the candy's terrible. You're very good. A good friend of mine once said that if you just lend a listening ear and stay engaged, oftentimes people come to the answers they need on their own. Heartwarming realism win. So we see the headline outlook gloomy for Wonka sales, but you actually read the paper? It's about emissions and chemicals. Fake sensational headlines that bury the lead. <sighs> Realism win. But I suppose maybe he's just a rotten egg who deserves it. Yeah. Honesty. He also has a funny haircut. I do not. Everyone who mocked the hairstyle, they did it on purpose. For this joke. Worth it. Also, Charlie's unfazed. Like, was he hardened by the weirdness of the factory? Or maybe Wonka's so vain that he put his logo on his soles like in the therapy scene and Charlie just has observation skills and wanted to out Wonka Wonka. Either way, that's a win. You know, they're always telling you what to do, what not to do, and it's not conducive to a creative atmosphere. You just don't get it, Mom. Stop trying to change me, Dad. Usually they're just trying to protect you. Because they love you. Charlie is such a good boy. Must protect. And Wonka's reaction. Ugh, just because you're correct doesn't mean you're right. Gosh. Ask who? My father? <laughs> no way. If my dad was Christopher Lee, I'd be apprehensive too. You want me to go with you? Help on this win. Hey. Hey, what a good idea. Willingness to change win. And you know what? I've got transportation. <laughs> Pain is hilarious. Oh, so he did move the whole building. I have 
several questions, mainly about the logistics and how petty and spiteful that father was to do that, but then a reminder that this is a world of fantastics and I'm still not wholly convinced that this isn't colored by Wonka's mind. Let's see what the damage is, shall we? Call back to traumatic flashbacks win. Even though he disapproved of his son's business, he still loved and supported him from far away. I like how this shows that love can help people change. Earlier, we see how controlling and domineering he is. No son of mine is going to be a chocolate. Yeah. And like most controlling parents, they do not approve of any act of rebellion. He even went so far as to move the entire house away. But after time goes by, he realizes how much he loves his son and gets over it. He probably didn't try to reconnect because he felt guilty. Just goes to show the difference between love and approval and how careful we need to be to not mix up the two and how we treat others. Also, this entire scene was based on Tim Burton visiting his dying mother and he found out she made a scrapbook full of reviews of his movies. Just, wow, emotions, man. Finding out someone's identity from their teeth? More likely than you think. Realism, why are there so many of those in this movie? It's a doll story, what is happening? All these years, and you haven't flossed. Like the rest of us, he gets them professionally flossed twice a year. Also, awkward reconnecting small talk. Awkward family hug, awkward family hug. Pat, pat. Also, they both had rubber gloves, similar clothes, and Willie obviously brushed his pearly whites. Guess Willie still liked his dad even though he buried it. And Willie's still having trouble processing this, being shown this much love. Sometimes healing takes a bit, and that's showcased here, but you also get the feeling that things will be okay. You smell like old people and soap. <laughs> I like it. Ah, it's so precious! Elbows off the table. Manners. Boys, no business at the dinner table. Dinner time is family time win. Oh, hey, that was another doll reference, haha. -ha. Also, treating Wonka like he's part of the family. Recreating winter with powdered sugar, only in Wonka's twisted mind. Life had never been sweeter. And taking off a point for that one. Let's get this out of the way. This movie is not Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory with Gene Wilder. It's not supposed to be. Despite the changed ending, it's a more faithful telling of the story. Fun fact, Raw Dahl did not like the 1972 Stewart version of his story starring the late Gene Wilder. Rest in peace, both of them. Mainly because Dahl was constantly shunted out of making decisions. He's credited for a screenplay that was actually written behind his back, he didn't get the choice he wanted for Willy Wonka, and his entire story was changed without his consent. Lissy Dahl was very protective of the story as a result and only trusted it in Burton's hands after the whole Bucket's House thing. I know a lot of people love the original Willy Wonka movie. I do too. I just love this movie more for many reasons. First is Willy Wonka. Not only is this a more realistic take, I like the exploration of the character. Does he have the same amount of charm and whimsy as Wilder? Of course not, but he wasn't supposed to. Johnny Depp was doing his own thing. And I love how weird he is. Depp is having so much fun being this child in an adult's body. He's awkward, he's cringy, and I love every second he's on screen. I also love how diabolical he can be. How much of this did Wonka plan? How much did he improvise? And how much were just happy accidents? Next is Charlie. People say he doesn't act like a regular kid, that because he's so good and perfect, he's not relatable. Well, he does act like a regular kid. Just as there are kids who get angry, selfish, and cry like the previous Charlie, there are good kids who understand sacrifice and try to do the right thing at all times, even when it's hard. And if they have pain, they deal with it inside. In fact, many people actually find the older Charlie hard to relate to because he complains about everything all the time, but that's equally a disservice because that's a kid too. Some kids are Paragon, some are Renegade, and some are a little in between. Kids aren't a monolith and all types are valid. And even then, newer Charlie wasn't perfect. You really have to look, but he did some not so perfect things like spending the money he found on himself instead of his family. He had a lot of temptations throughout the movie, but he resisted them when it counted. Another thing I love about this movie is the intentionally weird tonal dissonance. 
Like this moment tries so hard with the music to be taken seriously, but it's Deep Roy's in a lollipop viking boat in a candy wonderland. It's so silly and uncomfortable that you can't not laugh, and the movie is full of moments like this. The movie has such a distinct style with all the synchronization and assembly line motifs even before we actually enter the factory. It's like an interpretive dance of industrial England. I appreciate how Tim Burton and Johnny Depp both insisted they stick as closely to the book as possible, down to quoting lines exactly. What a beastly girl. Despicable. Lissy Dahl, Roald's widow, was very strict about artistic control. She even said that Roald Dahl would be proud of this version. So original author approval win and approval from his wife win. I also love how the grandparents were given much more of an identity in this version. Grandma Josephine is what you'd expect a warm and loving grandmother to be, Grandpa George is the curmudgeon with a heart of gold, and Grandma Georgina is... I love grapes. Pure. Just pure. Every time she spoke was a win for me. The music by Danny Elfman is fantastic. The dark and quirky style really matches the tone of this diet saw story. Each of the Oompa Loompa songs are very unique and have a memorable style. Yes, they aren't as memorable as the previous songs, but to be fair, they do say Oompa Loompa doopity doo over and over again, so if you forgot the tunes, I'd be very surprised. Even though this version copied the lyrics straight from the book, it really sounds like Danny had fun making these songs and doing them in different genres. And because Deep Roy admitted he couldn't sing, Danny did the voices for all the Oompa Loompas. Like I said, Danny Elfman is always a win. A lot of people have criticized this movie for being way too dark compared to the book. Well, in the original manuscripts, there was going to be a kid with the last name Herpes. I'll let you sit on that one for a bit while I throw another faithfulness win at this. And if you think this adaptation is too dark, don't watch the Broadway version, you'll have a heart attack. Shout out to Midnight Sonata for showing me. Also, come on, the visuals, the glorious Burtony visuals. If it's a Tim Burton flick, you automatically know it's going to be a visual spectacle for the eyes, and he's clearly upped his game with the scenery. Even the normal, everyday world looks fantastic and amazing when viewed through the Burton doll lens. Also, despite the darker visuals and atmosphere, the tone strangely seems very uplifting and optimistic. The family in particular seems closer and happier despite having less than the Stuart version. The practical effects are also very interesting. Much of it looks fake, but it's not fake. That's real. That's real. That's real. All of that is real. Kind of says a lot about us and our imaginations, huh? Despite it being real, we thought it was fake. Also, that actually looks like liquid chocolate, not painted water. And all of this combined is why this movie is my favorite film of all time. A lifetime supply of chocolate! These aren't real frogs, are they? It's just a spell. Besides, it's the card you want. This is the story of a man named Stanley. Well, good night, forever! Mr. Wonka is being unreasonable. Learn to throw your voice, fool your friends, fun and party. All this chocolate. We can always buy some sea salt ice cream. You're very good. It's good to be helping. I'm your dentist, and I enjoy the career that I picked.